there are two things I'd like to do in this video. One is I'd like to make some improvements of what happens when I change either the metric shown for the Spark chart or the time scale shown. And second, I'd like to include a dropdown or a spinner component at the top of the screen, which will show all the states. And if the user selects a particular state, we should update the data shown in the chart for all the COVID-19 cases of that state. So first, one thing you'll notice is that when I change the metric being shown in the graph, this bottom component, this text view, doesn't get updated. So we're actually showing wrong information here, right? This 20,000 is for the number of positive cases of coronavirus on this particular day and not the number of deaths. So this should really be updated when this metric is updated. The way we'll fix this is by adding some logic in this method, update display metric. This method is invoked every time the user changes the metric shown on the graph. So what the logic we have here is doing is updating the metric on the adapter. We'd also like to reset the number and the date shown in the bottom text views. So really what we'd like to do is call the method that we wrote a while ago called update info for date. So the idea here is that we want to pass in the last COVID data object and have this bottom component show the most recent data, the last day of data that we have, along with the metric corresponding to the metric passed in here. And that logic is already built inside of the update info for data class. So you can see that we're already checking the met adapter metric. So we're going to show the right value. The question now is how do we know what to pass in here? The issue is that we need to know what data is currently being displayed in the Spark view. If the data being shown is a national data, then we can take the last element of that list of COVID data representing the national coronavirus data and pass that into update info for date. For date. But if we're showing a particular state's data, we need to know what state we're showing and grab the last day's worth of data for that state and pass that in. So we need to have some way of knowing what is being shown currently. To do that, we're going to add one more property or member variable inside of main activity. I'm going to define a property called currently shown data. And this will hold on to the data that's currently being displayed inside of the Spark view. And the reason I'm assigning the value here is because this method, update display with data, takes in the list of data which is being shown in the Spark view. So we know that this method has to be called at the beginning and every time that the data for the Spark view has changed. Currently shown data is going to be equal to exactly the parameter passed into update display data. Now, Android Studio can help us to define this property. Create property currently shown data. And now we can go back to update info for date and then pass in the last element of the currently shown data. One more thing I'd like to do before we try this out is a quick design improvement. Based on the metric being shown, we can display a different color for the chart. So I'm going to add a comment here which says update the color of the chart. And what we want is there's an attribute on the Spark view called line color. And we want to set this to be equal to some color integer. The way you get a color integer is you can say context.compat.getColor. And you can pass in context, which is this, and a color resource. So there are some predefined color resources like r.color. Let's say color accent. This will give us back a color int. And I'm going to actually add an annotation here to make it obvious that this variable is of type color int. So we can pass in color int here. And then also we can update the text view, which represents the metric. So we call that TV metric label, and we're going to set the text color, color int. So now based on the metric, we want to show a different color here rather than just the color accent. Here are the colors that I picked out, which I thought were intuitive for each of the metric types. Negative cases is green, positive cases is this orange color, and number of deaths is this red color. So back in Android Studio, I'm going to paste in those hexadecimal values inside of the color resource file. So instead of resources, values, you should already have a color to XML, and we're going to add three more colors here. One will be color negative, 
And then this will have a value of the green color. Then we'll have color positive. This has the orange value. And finally, we'll have one more color representing the death metric. This has that red value. So now, that we, now that we've defined these three colors, we can go back here and again use uh, the when construct, the when statement in Kotlin. We're going to define a color resource, which is the result of this when statement. Inside of the when statement, for each metric, we'll map it to the color resource that we had. So for example, metric negative will map to r.color.color negative, positive will call, be color positive, and death will be color death. Now we can use the color res value when we're obtaining the color int using context context.compat.getColor. And finally, last thing we can do before we run this is inside of this method, update display with data, we're calling update info for date. We're already calling this method inside of update display metric. And we're actually doing other useful things such as updating the line color. So rather than calling update info for date, I'm instead going to call update display metric and pass in metric positive because that's, that's always going to be the default metric shown. Let's try it. So now you can see when we run the app initially, we are again seeing the positive cases of coronavirus over the maximum time scale, but we have this nice color applied to it, this orange color. If I change this to be death, we can see it gets updated to red. And importantly, the texture at the bottom showing the exact metric for the most recent day has been updated to reflect the chosen metric. The last major piece of functionality for our app is allowing the user to select which state they want to see data for. So back in main activity, this is corresponding to this to-do item that we had left in one of the prior videos. So we're finally going to do this. I'm going to remove the to-do and I'm going to delegate the work of updating the spinner with the state names into a method called update spinner with state data. And this function is going to take in one parameter, which is the list of all the states to show. And that will simply be the key set of this map. So if you recall, the per state daily data is a map of each key being a state and the value being all of the COVID data for every day of that state. So now we can have Android Studio help us to define this method. I'll define it in main activity and I'll have the parameter be called state names. And this is of type set of string. The objective here is given these state names, which are a set, we wanna turn that into an ordered list. And we're gonna take that ordered list and pass that in as the input to our dropdown component. So first let's turn our set into an ordered list where we're alphabetizing all of the states. So we'll call state names dot to mutable list so we can actually change and mutate the contents of this list. We'll call this variable state abbreviation list and it will contain the abbreviations for all 50 states plus several US territories. And we want to alphabetize this list. So we want states like Alaska or Alabama to show up at the top and states like Wyoming to show up very, at the very end of this dropdown. So we'll call dot sort. And then we also want to have one special entry in the state abbreviation list, which is to represent the national data, right? We're not going to get that in the set of strings passed in here because this only contains state names. So we're going to have to add it manually right here. And this is going to be the very first element in our list. So we'll add this at position zero. And I'm going to have a special entry which is called all states, which basically means I want to see the national data. So again, Android Studio will help us to define this variable, all states. And this is going to have a value, a hard-coded value of all nationwide. And I'm actually going to define this outside because I can make this a const. So what we want to do next is take this ordered state abbreviation list data and add that as the data source to our spinner. Next, we need to add the spinner into our UI. So going into activity main.xml, we would like to be able to add a spinner component 
at the very top of this layout that we're building. I'm not a big fan of the built-in Android component for this, which is this spinner component. I think it's really hard to use and it doesn't look that good. Instead, we're going to use a library called Nice Spinner. And this is easier to work with and in my opinion, it looks better. So let's go down first to how to include this library into our project. So inside of the build.gradle file, we need to add a dependency like normal, but also we should add this section about repositories. So I'm gonna go into Android Studio, go into the build.gradle file, which is located inside of the app module. And you probably won't have a repository section here. So right after we added compile options, let's add repositories. And we wanna add this Maven repository. So I'm gonna copy this line and paste that in. And now we should be able to add the dependency. I'm gonna copy this line and paste it in here. Right, let's tap on sync now and hopefully we're able to download this library properly. Looks like it succeeded. So now we can go back into activity main and we can include it in this area that we allocated for it. To do this, I'm gonna go back into the code view of our layout and Right here is the label which describes what this spinner is for. I'm going to create another component which is called spinner and it should be nice spinner. We'll set the layout width to be zero DP because we want this nice spinner to take up as much room as possible. The height can be wrap content. And we're also going to add a margin start and end. There's a few other properties we can add in here. Ellipse size, we're going to ellipse size in the end. And the maximum number of lines will be one. And then the text appearance of what we're showing should be large. And now our job is we need to constrain this view appropriately. For the horizontal constraint, we want the left end of the spinner to be up against the right end of the select state text view. So I'm going to say constraint start is to the end of the TV select state. And then the end constraint is going to be to the end of the parent, because we want it to go to the end of the screen. For the vertical constraint, we're going to have the top and bottom of the spinner be equivalent to the top and bottom of the select state text view, which is to the left. So bottom, bottom of, and then we want to pass in CV select state, and then something quite similar for the top. And then one last attribute that I forgot to add is something called pop-up text alignment. And I'm going to put start here, just so that in the dropdown, all of the states are left aligned or start aligned. So if I go into the design tab now, we should see that there is a space allocated for the spinner. One thing we can do here is just give this an ID because we'll need to refer to it in our mainactivity.kotlin file. We'll call it spinner select. Now we can go back into mainactivity and let's reference this spinner that we just added. So I'll say spinner select dot attach data source and we'll pass in the state abbreviation list. The last thing we need to do to hook it all up is we'd like to be notified when the user has selected another state from the dropdown. So on the spinner select widget, we're going to add a set on spinner item selected listener. And this takes in four parameters. The only ones that we care about are the parent and the position. So I'm gonna put an underscore in for the other params. And this will now, this method will be invoked every time a new item in this dropdown is selected. So in order to get the selected state, we're going to say parent dot get item at position, and we'll pass in position. And we know that this is going to be of type string. Our data source for the spinner is a list of string. So I'm gonna cast this as a string and save this as the selected state. Now we'd like to get the corresponding daily list of COVID data for that state. So I'll say per state daily data, and then we'll look inside the map to pull out all of the data relevant to that state. This is going to be val selected data. The only thing we need to be careful about here is that if the selected state from the dropdown is 
the all option, which is I want to see the data nationally, then that element won't exist in the per state daily data. And we're going to get a null value here. So if that happens, we can use this question mark colon operator to say if the value here was null, then we would instead like to assign the value of national daily data to this variable. Now that we have selected data, which is our list of COVID data across all the days available, we can now simply call the method that we already have called update display with data with selected data. That should be it. Let's try it out. Perfect. So now we're able to see this drop down. And by default, the all option is selected, which means we're seeing data nationally. And then all these state abbreviations are what we're getting back from the API. So for example, I might look at the California data, which is CA. And we can see that the data does get updated. So the text view down here to show the exact metric value is showing something significantly smaller, which is for California. And then if I choose different metrics, I'm again seeing the California specific data. And the same functionality applies across all states. I can scrub on the Spark view. I can change the time scale. And I can choose any metric that I want. If you've gotten this far, drop a comment to let me know so I can congratulate you on building out all the functionality for our application. In the next video, we're going to make a couple design improvements. For example, we're going to use one more Robinhood library called Ticker in order to animate changes to this text view. And we'll do a few other design and color improvements in the app. Don't forget to subscribe so you can get notified when the next part comes out. And I'll see you in a little bit. Bye.